السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون To the long time listener and first time visitor We welcome you to this episode Now without further ado, let's get into it بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا حمدا We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala he guided us to Islam الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Ya ibadullah. After the episode which aired, Can a Muslim Smoke Weed? There was some good feedback that we received um, and a few comments, inshallah ta'ala, that we want to look at today. But a concept jumped out. And that concept was as it relates to taking intoxicants and how that relates to the prayer. I just smoke weed. Can I pray? Man. But before getting into that, inshallah ta'ala, there were a few points from that reminder that I wanted to clarify. A few things I wanted to clarify, inshallah ta'ala. So let me just stress that these things that I want to clarify, they are from what I know, from my knowledge. And from my observations, ma'am, from my observations of others and from the experience that I had with them or saw them going through. And, and that relates to the issue of whether or not an individual who smokes weed will go on to smoking cigarettes, ma'am. Now, let me stress that not everyone who smokes weed goes on to smoke cigarettes. It's not the case for everyone because there have been people who... For years, they just smoke weed. They don't go on to anything else, right? However, there are some people who they do go on to smoking cigarettes and who go on to doing other things um, that are worse that we will get into, inshallah. Ta'ala. Now, I don't want anyone to understand from this that I'm saying that weed is a gateway drug. I'm not saying that, as I know that the, the data around that is debatable. However, it's haram. So whether it's a gateway drug or not, it's haram. It's prohibited. Right, So I don't want you to get caught up in that source, but I want you to stay on point with Nilahi Ta'ala. It's haram, khalas. Whether it's a gateway or not, it's haram. Some people, they don't do anything else. Some people, they do. Naam. Also, the reason perhaps that some people have mentioned on why they go from weed to cigarettes, as we'll come to see, inshallah ta'ala, from one of the comments, is that it had a common effect. Cigarettes for them had a common effect and relaxed them just like weed does. So they would go from one to the other from, and from that one back to the other now from this standpoint. Now this is with some people, maybe not everyone. This is with some people, right? This is what they have mentioned. But again, I, I wanna stress that not everyone goes on to smoke cigarettes, right? Also, I wanna make it clear for everyone so that they do understand that the weed that is manufactured today is not like the weed from yesterday. This was not mentioned, but it needs to be mentioned. That the weed that is manufactured today is not like the weed that was manufactured yesterday. The one yesterday was haram and was bad. This one today is worse. Ma'am, the chemicals that they add to it, right? So on and so forth. Very bad. Very, 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 very horrible. So it went from horrible to even more horrible to even more disgusting and destructive. So that also needs to be known. And also it's important to understand that once you pull back the curtain on evil, it makes it easier for you to fall into another evil. And this is why you find some people who already have an inclination to do wrong, right? If they start smoking weed, then it becomes easy for them to go on to smoke cigarettes. It, goes, it becomes easy for them to go on to take other intoxicants, to take other drugs, to mix weed with alcohol, so on and so forth, right? It's very, it's very dangerous. It's very bad. And once the curtain is pulled back, you can't, you can't, you know, close it. It's it. You understand the experience. You have the experience. It's a memory. It's, that's it. You can't go backwards now. There was an individual who, for years, they were addicted to cocaine and they struggled with it, right? And they struggled with it. 
And one of the things that the brother he mentioned to me, he said that, you know, subhanAllah, I wish I never tried it as a youth. And pretty much woe unto the individual who introduced it to me. Because once he said, once he took that first line, that was it. That was it. So we have to be very careful. Because once you open that door of evil, it may tempt you to want to do other things. And that's going to get you in very, very big trouble. You know how many times it takes the crackhead to get addicted to crack? Do you know how many times the crackhead has to experiment with crack before they become addicted to crack? You know how many times? You know how many times? Once. One time. One time. They hit that pipe and that was it. For the rest of the time, they kept trying to find that high again. They kept chasing that first initial high. Why? Because every time after that, they never got as high as they did the first time they hit that crack pipe. That first hit took them places that they that they still run, running and trying to get back to. So don't play around with this type of stuff. It's very, 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 very evil and it's very dangerous. Um, one of the comments that had came that pointed to uh, a fact that was mentioned, he mentions, and I'm not going to say the brother's name. I don't want to put him out like that on Front Street because it's not the, not, not, not the point. Alhamdulillah, the brother, he's kicked the habit. Alhamdulillah, no longer dealing with this type of stuff. Naam. Um, and from what is I understood from it, Naam, is, is that this what he's talking about before Islam. Before Islam. Okay? I'm going to make that clear. Ala kulli hal. The brother he mentioned, he said that when I used to smoke cigarettes, this is what he mentioned. He said, when I used to smoke cigarettes and weed, the only way I could feel completely relaxed was smoking them. This is what he mentioned. The only way that he could feel completely relaxed was from smoking them. He goes on to say that once you finish from one, the craving for the other begins. Sure, it may only last for a short time. Um... But without more, what? When he, didn't, when he couldn't get it, he said it was followed by anxiety, then frustration, and then anger. He said, but, but you know, alhamdulillah, he goes on to say, when Allah removes these things, you, you are no longer a slave to them. You can relax, have sabr. Allah loves those with sabr. And then he poses a very nice question for you to think about. He said, can you really have two or three masters and have peace. Yeah. Because undoubtedly these drugs, they take over people's lives. So it's very, 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 very dangerous. And it's very, 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 very serious as we're going to come to see in depth and in more detail with Allah Ta'ala. The comment that led actually to today's or the question that the brother he posed in the comment section on YouTube that actually led to today's session was that he mentioned, he said, Barakallah fikum, my brother, for this video. But I have one question. I'm trying to quit smoking weed. I'm trying to quit smoking weed, but I don't want to miss my prayers. Is it allowed to pray after you make wudu? Naam. This question, it required an answer greater than I had the time to type out. So, it was better that I give this answer in a video form. Now, alhamdulillah, not long after posing that question, another viewer, they mentioned, and they gave some very good advice that I also want to expound upon in this session, bithnilahi ta'ala, in this episode, bithnilahi ta'ala. And they responded to them by saying, you should never miss your prayers, which is 100% correct. You should never miss your prayers. You should not be under the influence while performing salah. Very good caveat that they mentioned. They said, they go on to say, so if you can, so if you can, brother, stop immediately because the psychoactive effect of THC lasts for hours. This would interfere with your ability to perform salah. Make dua for Allah to help you stay, stay steadfast and make it easy for you to leave this haram. I will make dua for you too. Never miss your prayers. It is the only valuable thing you have in this dunya. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Naam. And that was a very good response. 
So with that being the case, I didn't feel a great rush to respond in video form to the brother or to the questioner. Um, but I do want to expound upon aspects that were mentioned inside of the good response of that viewer. May Allah Ta'ala reward them tremendously. And I want to bring and I want to anchor it down in some proofs and evidences with Allah Ta'ala. Man. Because our deen is, is what? It's based upon proofs and evidences. So I want to give us some proofs and evidences to help fortify us as well. Okay? Firstly, let's go back. Because as we know, alcohol or intoxicants in the early stages of the revelation was not prohibited. The prohibition came later on. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He first showed us the, the harms of intoxicants and that their harm outweighs their benefit. And that is in the verse that we took in the last session um, speaking about a similar or related topic uh, of weed. And that is as Allah Ta'ala, He says, Yes, khamri wal maysir. They ask you about intoxicants and gambling. Qul, say, Fihima ithmun kabirun wa manafi'u nas. Say that in them there is a great evil and a benefit for mankind. But their harm outweighs their benefit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah, He informs us that the harm of intoxicants is more than a benefit. They are more than a benefit. And this by itself is what a discouragement because anything that the harm outweighs the benefit, then it's not something that, you know, is, is, um, is good to do. Okay? In any event, ثُمَّ إِنَّهُ تَعَالَى نَهَاهُمْ عَلَى الْخَمْرِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He prohibited the Muslims from intoxicants عند حضور الصلاة When it was time to pray. When it was time to pray. And this goes into the question about that the brother had and his concern about smoking weed and then praying. So anyone out there who find themselves in that same situation that you smoke weed or you drink alcohol or whatever the case is, you take whatever intoxicants that, that you take. Now, it's important to understand that while you are high, stay away from praying until you sober up and then offer your prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, as it comes in Surah An-Nisa, in his verse 43, Allah ta'ala, he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الصَّلَاءُ وَأَنْتُمْ سُكَارًا Allah ta'ala, he says, O you who believe, do not approach the prayer, do not come near the prayer while you are intoxicated, while you are in a drunken state or while you are high, to put it in another way. So while you are under the influence, while you are high, do not approach the prayer. Allah Ta'ala says, Until you know what you're saying. Don't approach the prayer until you sober up and you know what you're saying. Okay, that makes sense. So then there was a stage where you couldn't drink when it was time to pray. If you look at this, all of this is making it harder to drink or making it harder to get high, right? Because you're already discouraged because the harm outweighs the benefit. And then you can't be drunk and it's time to pray. So now it becomes when is the opportunity for an individual? You understand? So it makes it very difficult. ثُمَّ إِنَّهُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala حَرَّمَهُ عَلَى الْإِطْلَاقِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He made a haram across the board. Period. Allah ta'ala He says يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرِ Verily, intoxicants and gambling وَالْأَنصَاب وَالْأَزْلَامِ رِجِسٌ مَنْ عَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah ta'ala He says that verily uh, intoxicants all types of intoxicants, gambling, al uh and al-Islam, uh, yani, which is like we're seeking arrows uh, for uh, for luck, naam, seeking arrows for luck, or to make a decision, things like that. All of this, then these are from the abominations of shaitan. These are from the abominations of shaitan and from the handiwork of the shaitan. From the handiwork of the devils. 
So Allah Ta'ala says, فَاجْتَنِبُوا He says, so stay away from it. فَاجْتَنِبُوا Stay away from it. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Stay away from it so that you could be successful. Stay away from it in order to be successful. In other words, if you want to be successful, stay away from these things. The prohibition and how we know it's prohibited is from Allah Ta'ala's statement, فَاجْتَنِبُوا Stay away from it. This is stronger than saying, don't do it. Because if you stay away from it, then this makes doing it impossible. You understand? Let me give an example. It's like if I were to tell you, stay away from such and such candy store. Right? Stay away from such and such candy store. What this means is, because what's, what's, what's intended? Don't, don't, don't eat no candy. So stay away from it. Period. That means don't go near to it. Don't go to the street that it's on. Don't go to the door of the candy store. Don't go inside the candy store. Don't feel the wrapper. Don't smell it. Stay away from it. Period. So if you, if you stay far away from the, all the roads that lead to the candy store, then what? You'll never reach the candy store. You'll never reach the candy. This is stronger than saying, don't go to the candy store, don't eat candy. It's stronger. So, Allah Ta'ala statement, stay away from it, then we understand what is haram. Stay away from it, it's haram. So, Allah Ta'ala, He made it haram all the time. Okay? So, Allah Ta'ala goes on in the next verse to tell us some of the evil ramifications of intoxicants. Allah Ta'ala says, Inna ma yuridu shaytan. That verily shaitan, he wants to what? And you He wants to put between you enmity. He wants to put between you enmity and hatred. Naam. Inside of intoxicants and inside of gambling. So one of the things that happens and results from intoxicants and from gambling is that the Muslims start to hate each other. The Muslims start to hate each other. Naam. And this could be due to a number of reasons, but let's look at some of the obvious reasons. When it comes to gambling, now it's clear. You owe somebody, you know, you gamble, you lose, you owe somebody money, then you don't want to pay them back, so on and so on. They don't want to pay you back. It's going to cause problems. Person may feel he has to retaliate, he has to send a message, that, you know, this, that, and that. It's going to lead to things, going to cause problems. You're not going to like each other. That's clear. That's, that's very clear. Okay, when it comes to intoxicants, intoxicants, they take over a person's life. They take over a person's life. As the brother he mentioned, Zala Khaira, a person becomes a slave to these things. That's all they can do and all they can think about is intoxicants. That's going to lead them to do things that going to cause problems between them and their loved ones and everyone else. Because reflect on that crackhead or that person that's on meth or that person who is addicted to heroin or whatever the case is. They become so taken over by these substances that that's all they can think about. And the only objective that they have is getting that next high. So if they don't have money, then they're going to steal. They're going to rob. They're going to sell themselves. They're going to do all kind of evil and despicable things just to get money so they can get that next high. That's all they care about. Individuals who are habitual Methamphetamine takers and so on and so forth, they fall into yani, uh, what, they, what they say is dope sickness. Now, when they don't get their opioids, when they don't get their drugs, right? They, they, they get sick, physically sick, nauseous, throwing up, so on and so forth. Why? Until they take their drugs. So a person in this state, you think they're thinking about and worrying about anything else? All they care about is their drugs. And they will burn every bridge on earth to get their drugs. There have been crackheads who have sold their children to drug dealers just to get some crack. Mothers who have sold their children to get crack. So, yeah, that's going to cause enmity and hatred, no doubt. However, Allah Ta'ala goes on to say, وَيَصُدُّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ and it will prevent you from the remembrance of Allah. Think about that. All you care about is drugs. You 
You ain't worrying about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not at all. Allah ta'ala says, وَعَنَ الصَّلَاةِ And it will prevent you from the prayer. Because you're not worried about the prayer. You're not worried about remembering Allah. You're not worried about the prayer. All you're worried about is your next high. It's going to prevent you. This is what drugs and gambling is going to do. Do you understand? Allah Ta'ala says, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ He said, so, you going to stop? So are you going to stop? Allah is asking you, are you going to stop? This ayah can be found in Surah Al-Ma'idah, in this verse 90 and 91. And it is it is it is very important for us to understand the danger of intoxicants. So, my brother, who you are addicted to weed, may Allah Taala aid you and fortify you so that you don't smoke weed anymore. And for all of my brothers and sisters out there who are addicted to one illegal substance or another. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect you. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes you strong so that you're able to kick this evil habit. So that you're able to get away from these evil things. And that Allah ta'ala, He improves your life and gives you the best in this world and in the next. Ameen. One of the roads or one of the steps that's needed on the road to recovery is to understand the evil nature of those substances that plague you with, and with their addiction. Those substances that plague you and you are addicted to them. Khamar, umul khabaif. Khamar is the mother of vile sins. Is the mother of vile sins. Like I said, people will rob and steal and kill and sell themselves. Do all types of evil and despicable sexual acts for money just so they can get high. So, I mean, it's, it's very clear. Now, but listen to this. There comes a hadith an Abdullah bin Umar, Rabbiullahu ta'ala and Huma, called. He said, Qara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man sharib al khamr. Lam yaqbal. I want you to listen to this. Whoever drinks alcohol, whoever takes intoxicants, it's not just drinking alcohol, taking intoxicants, alcohol, weed, crack, meth, whatever, heroin, whatever. Whoever takes intoxicants, Lam yaqbal Allahu lahu salatan. Allah Ta'ala will not accept from them salatan, not even one prayer. Arba'ina sabahan for 40 days. 40 days. 40 days. You understand? 4 zero. 40 days. Salah is not accepted. I want that to sink in. The salah is not accepted. What does that mean before we go on? Does that mean person smoke a blunt? Then they say, all right, I'm good. I don't got to pray for 40 days. No, does not mean that. You still have to pray because you still have a debt. Muslims, all you Muslims, all us Muslims, look, I'm talking to you. When you wake up in the morning time, you got a debt on you. You got to pay it every single day. You got to pay your debt. So when you wake up for Fajr, you have the debt of Fajr. How do you pay? That debt is by praying Fajr. You have a debt for Dhuhr. How do you pay? That debt is by praying Dhuhr and so on and so forth for all your five daily prayers. You have a debt. You got to pay it off. The only way to pay it off is to pray. That makes sense? Okay. So you still have to pay your debt. So what's meant by Allah does not accept your prayer, meaning you get no reward for it for 40 days. No reward. You still got to pray, but you don't get no reward for it. That's very dangerous. Especially remember, on the day of judgment, the deeds are weighed. 
The deeds are weighed on the day of judgment. You need every piece of reward you can get. But if you want to jeopardize your life in 40 day blocks where you get no reward for your prayers, you're going to be in serious trouble. You're going to be in serious trouble. Now think about all of those people who want to get it in one last time before Ramadan. So they go out clubbing one last time before Ramadan. Few more rounds of shots before Ramadan. Why? Because they know when Ramadan comes, they're not going to be able to do this. I mean, so how are you the thinking? What are you, what are you the shaitan? What are you, a devil? You know, the shaitan get locked up in Ramadan. But you got people, that's how they treat Ramadan. Like, I'm going to get locked up for a little bit, then I'm going to get out and be wild again. Yeah, subhanallah. Anyway, listen. Look at the concept. Look, look at the mentality. And look what's really going to happen to you. You go out that last time before Ramadan, you want to get yours off. And then what happens? You, you, you drink the alcohol, you take the blunt, whatever. Now, for 40 days, which means what? Ramadan and beyond, your prayers, you get no reward for it. The obligatory prayers, no reward. Sunnah prayers, you might pray, no reward. Tarawih. No reward. Why? Because you want it one last time before Ramadan. It's evil, man. Anyway, the Prophet وسلم, goes on to say, For in Taba, if they repent, Taba Allahu alayhi, then Allah will forgive them. For in Ada, Lam Yaqbal. And if they go back, Allah Ta'ala he will not accept. Lam Yaqbal Allah. If they go back to it, Allah will not accept their prayer for 40 days. For in Taba, Taba Allah And if he repents, Allah will forgive him um, for what he had done. For in Ada, Lam Yaqbar Allah Salatan If he goes back, Allah will not accept his prayers for 40 days. Naam. For in Taba, Taba Allah And if he repents, then Allah will forgive him. For in Ada, Rabi'a, and if he goes, does it again, fourth time. Lam Yaqbar Allahu Lahu Salatan Arba'ina Sabah, and Allah Ta'ala will not accept his prayers 40 days. For in. For in Taba, Lam Yatubullahu Alayhi. After that fourth time, if they repent, Allah won't accept it from them. So how are they going to get this sin off of them? How are they going to get the sin off of them if Allah doesn't accept their repentance? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he goes on and he says that لم يتوب الله عليه وسقاه من نهر الخبال that Allah would not accept his repentance and he will make he or she, right? Allah will not accept their repentance, whether male or female, and he will make them drink from the river of Al-Khabal. Naam. So they asked the, the narrator of the hadith, Qila, Ya Aba Abdul Rahman. وَمَنْ نَحْرُ الْخَبَالِ They said, and what is the, the river of Al-Khabal? What is that? He said, نَحْرٌ مِنْ صَدِيدِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ نَحْرٌ مِنْ صَدِيدِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ This is a river from the pus and bodily liquids and that which is excreted from the body, from the pus and from the wounds of the people of hell. It's so much, it's a river. And that's what they're going to drink. That's what they're going to have to drink from. So this is very, 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 very serious. So brother and sister, oh listener, we're saying this to say that what? Be very careful. I don't want anyone to think from the answer, you, you got to keep praying. Because you got to keep praying, period. You got your debt, you got to pay your debt. 
But I don't want anyone to think, listen, I'm going to smoke, I'm going to get high inside. When I when I when I when I when the high go away, I'm gonna pray and it's all good. No, it's not all good. No, it's not. You're playing with this. You're playing with having to go to the fire and get that sin burnt off of you. You playing with having potentially to go to the fire and drink from the pus and the nasty stuff that comes out of the wounds of the people in the hellfire. You wanna taste that? Do you wanna drink that? That's what you want to drink? I don't believe you do. So it is very serious. It is very serious. So whoever is plagued, don't stop praying. Never stop praying, ever. But understand this serious situation and how dangerous your situation actually is and what is on the line and how you are setting yourself up for ultimate destruction if you don't stop. The mere fact that this brother understood that this is a problem and he's trying to stop is a very good step in the right direction. Is a very good step in the right direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him and bless him and make him firm to leave off smoking weed and anything else that is haram that he should not be doing from these illegal substances. And likewise, everybody who was plagued with these things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you all the success. Give us all the success, period. Give all of us the success in doing that in which he loves and what in which he is pleased with. May Allah ta'ala give us all the good of this life and of the next. Bismillah ta'ala. If there's ever anything, anyone needs advice, whatever the case is, contact us, inshallah, and I'll try my best. If it is a comment and it comes, you didn't contact me directly, but it's a comment and it comes uh, like this, then if it's too much to explain there, then I will explain it inside of an upcoming video. استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته